Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Victory Road World Cup of Pokemon VGC. My name is Maeve O'Rourke. I am here with Lou, which is obviously great, but I think it's more exciting for me to be here with Gimli, uh, the best the best caster I've wanted to work with for forever. Really excited that Victory Road's given me this opportunity. Um, yeah. But, <laughs> but um, very excited. This next match that we have coming up is between Israel and Poland, so that is going to be Really interesting, I think, going forward. One player that I know uh, very well, Anosh, is going to be playing against Alexandra. So what are you what are you thinking, Lou? It's definitely going to be an exciting match. And with Gimli, he is a cat of not many words, but definitely excited to see an incineral whenever it does join the battlefield. But for me, it's Reggie Alecki. And having had a little sneak peek at the teams, I can see one on the team. So I am delighted. But let's first of all just take a little recap about what's going down so far between Israel and Poland. You can see that it's currently 2-3 to Poland. So if you know, Alexander is able to win out this particular match. It's going to force either a draw as a minimum for Poland. Um, however, if you're a no-shoe, you're going to want to try and, you know, equal the score at this stage, just so that things are getting that little bit more intense. You don't have so much of a mountain to climb back to try and get that draw. Yeah, and Anosh is somebody that I know has done a really incredible job team building. Old school player, been around for a long time, very talented. Uh, and there's a lot of, I think, variation here amongst all of these teams in terms of, you know, their restricted Pokemon and what they're running. Um, you know, we're still seeing a lot of the Xerneas and the Calyrex and Zacian and stuff, but I do love seeing the Palkia on that side for Poland. Uh, I know we got to look at a couple of Palkia or one Palkia yesterday on a team that was full of Palkia, which I thought was very <laughs> interesting. Uh, just the way that these teams are team building and working together. And Israel, like you said, they do have to win this match just to, you know, stay in contention. You know, they can't afford, you know, they can only afford to drop one if they want to possibly, you know, go for a draw here. But I think, you know, I think Inosh is going to be bringing some really interesting teams. He's, you know, he and his whole crew, I think, are going to maybe show us a little bit of uh, exciting stuff here. But there are a couple of extra Pokemon on their teams that I am excited to look at as well. Just well, beyond let's... the right Gialecki. Oh, I mean, yeah, I'm going to talk about the Rich Lucky, but let's jump into their teams a little bit and get a closer look at what both these players are going to be running. Um, you can see for Anosha, you've got the Groudon and Charizard. Again, really nice to see kind of a sun combination come back into the fray. Charizard loves to utilize that sunlight. Um, and it's interesting to see it in kind of a non-Gigantamax form. We're so used to seeing it running around when that was kind of um, allowed. But in Series 10, obviously, there's no Dynamax, no Gigantamax. So I'm interested to see how it's going to come into the fray without having that kind of mechanic in game. Grimmsnarl and Nihiligo, again, really good kind of utility pokemon grimmsnarl can be so disruptive as can that porygon too um and serena a pokemon i know that you want to talk about serena is definitely one of my favorite pokemon that's gotten a lot of more prominence uh since dynamax hasn't really been uh since dynamax is not able to be utilized in series 10 you know the queenly majesty is awesome getting access to triple axle which even though it can be inaccurate is still a really good move against a lot of the pokemon that are out there right now especially you know if you can hit all three times mm -hmm. with that triple axle and get that massive amount of damage you're in a really good spot it gets great access to a bunch of different you know to several different grass type moves and it's just one of those Pokemon that I think is uh, when it's utilized well, it's utilized, you know, it's a really great Pokemon. You'll see it with Rillaboom teams sometimes running two grassy glide users on the team, which is fun. And then the Porygon 2 here, which, you know, we haven't seen a whole lot of Porygon 2 since Series 10 really started. But Porygon 2 is just so bulky, so good with setting something up like a Trick Room 2. And it's, I mean, in Dynamax, we saw a couple of, uh, you know, Dynamax Porygon 2s, which were absolutely <laughs> nutty to handle sometimes because it was just so much damage that it took to just take them out of here. And then Alexandra, she is running that Kyogre, Tornadus, Urshifu, Rapid Strike, Regieleki, Stack Attack, and Serena as well. So two Serenas, which means it's going to be tough for priority moves this game. You must be smiling from ear to ear seeing two <laughs> Serenas in this particular matchup. But the one thing I love is kind of the team synergy that we've got going on here. That classic Tornoga strategy with Tornadus, Kyogre being able to go for that priority Tailwind. You could go for a powerful Water Spout. Whether you want to run an item like, you know, you can run Choice Scarf or even Choice Specs on those Kyogres just to deal so much damage or to try and have, still have that advantage in a Tailwind if your opponent has potentially matched one. But I think the big addition here is really that Serena because, like you said, without Dynamax, it's been able to come into the fray because now Dynamax has gone away, Fake Out has returned in full force, and having a Pokemon that can stop that priority, even if it's in the back and can switch in to stop it, I think makes such great flexibility for a Pokemon trainer, and to be able to protect your Kyogre and Tornado Tornadoes from doing whatever it wants to do, I think can give you really great options, depending on what leads are, so turn zero isn't as scary when you've got a Serena in the back, I think. 
Yeah, absolutely. And one thing I'm gonna have to see too, because you said this is Weather Wars, right? We've got a Groudon and we've got a Kyogre. Mm -hmm. Having that Tornadus in the back, especially for Alexandra, if she is running, you know, that Rain Dance Tornogre that we've seen, you know, we've seen a lot now. Having that Tornogre, that Tornadus be able to switch in, get that rain back up and uh, stop the solar power on that Charizard. If it's running that solar power ability, which most of them do, it's gonna be able to do a ton of extra damage on top of just being strong anyway in the sun. And then, you know, if they're able to stop that and make those moves less powerful, you know, protect something like the Serena that's not gonna wanna take any sort of really powerful uh, fire type moves. You know, the Urshifu I think is gonna be really big, having that Kyogre as well getting those surging strikes off in the rain, especially if it, you know if it's paired with the Tornadus, if the Kyogre can't come back in, switch the rain, you can still get that rain dance up and get a really strong surging strikes off into a couple of the different Pokemon onto Enosha's team, which I think is something that he's gonna have to really position around. Yeah, that's the thing. You kind of have multiple ways of setting your weather up, not only from obviously switching in the Kyogre, but then like you said, the rain dance and Tornadus. But I think as well, having pivot utility with Pokemon, such as Regieleki with Volt Switch or U-Turn or something like the Serena, does allow you to kind of manipulate that board state. So if you've had to switch out your Kyogre to reset the weather, having a Pokemon that can switch using U-Turn or Volt Switch allows you to bring it back in and get that weather back up on your field. Whereas with Groudon, it often does tend to be those real hard switches. And you do need to rely a lot more on those kind of flexible moves to help you start pivoting around. But I think it's always interesting when you see the Tornoga in a team, whether that's going to be coming out as a lead. And we're going to see Tornadus and Regieleki actually jumping out into the fray. Yeah, and then Serena and Grimmsnarl on the other side of the field here. Shiny Serena, which is another great shiny Pokemon that I've <laughs> always loved. But I absolutely love the idea that there's no weather here. So you mm -hmm. know that if you've got, you know, if somebody goes for that switch and you know the Groudon's going to be slower than that Kyogre, they always tend to run that way anyway, just based on the speed. So if, you know, if you're trying to bring in your Kyogre, but you're wary of the Groudon coming in because then you won't get your weather up, something I guess you have to pay attention to as well. And having the Tailwind option can make you even faster but uh, with that Tornadus, but you also have a lot of really good utility, I think, with the Tornadus here. It could go for something like a Taunt on that Grimmsnarl and really just put a stop to it setting up any screens. Uh, and can just be really disruptive. Well, that's the thing, you know, this is an information game. The one issue you've got to watch out for, though, is obviously the Prankster is not going to work down onto the opposing Grimmsnarl. Um, so that can be incredibly disruptive. Thunderbolt coming out, though, from that Regieleki into the opposing Grimmsnarl does a decent chunk of damage. And Tornado's actually going for the Hurricane straight away here as well, finds its mark without the rain. So some decent kind of damage to both these Pokemon, but nowhere in range of any KOs. As Serena does go for that U-turn, it does deal significant amount of damage to the Regieleki. Um, I think it's interesting, like you said, that, that Tornado's can kind of get up to so many different things you tell when rain dances taunts and things like that but actually opted straight away to get some damage out on the field yeah and the porygon 2 switches in here for enosha as well getting that download boost there um gonna be able to possibly put a little bit more trick room pressure onto this team you've got two pokemon on alexandria's side that go really fast and want to continue to go fast and they're mm. not going to be happy in that trick room yeah, that's very true. If you're Alexandra now, you need to find a way to shut down that Trick Crewman. Potentially, if that Tornadus does, is carrying Taunt, that's a really great way to try and stop that Porygon 2. Very rarely we see a Porygon 2 holding something like a Mental Herb, obviously opting for that Eevee Alight most times. Um, and Regieleki could potentially here, you know, either try and negate speed a little bit more or get some more damage with Thunderbolt or even give Alexandra the opportunity to go for that Volt Switch and bring a Pokemon in from the back. The one thing you have to be careful of, though, is if you do decide to bring in something like that Groudon, um, so I love that Kyogre, then you know she could have the potential to bring in Growler from the back and reset that weather. Yeah, instead that Grimmsnarl brings out, uh, comes out and the Serena swaps in, getting that Queenly Majesty up so that Taunt cannot go off into the Porygon 2. A Volt Switch here from the Regieleki on Alexandra's side brings that Regieleki back in. She could be bringing out and, you know, a couple of different Pokemon here. If it is something like trying to get that weather up, I think that's going to be a really interesting play. It is instead that Urshifu, who was uh, part of who uh, is a Pokemon that's really gonna love taking advantage of the rain if it is there. But the Trick Room mm -hmm. does go off for the Porygon too, so it's gonna make Enosh uh, have, a, have the speed advantage here to try and get some big moves off. Yeah, that was a beautiful switch in with the Serena, just protecting that Porygon too. And as well, the Vault Switch I think was nice for Alexander here because it gave you the opportunity to kind of think if that Trick Room, if there's no way to stop it, then it, you maybe need to bring in a different Pokemon. And Urshifu is certainly one that can threaten that Porygon too, with something like a close combat can deal some really big damage. But you have to watch out for the Serena here and not allow Enosh the opportunity to bring a Pokemon into Trick Room that can utilize it a little bit better than sort of Serena and Porygon too can. Possibly the Groudon might be built a little bit bulkier. Um, and a little bit slower so that it can utilize Trick Room stronger. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Serena here as well, I think. Maybe trying, you know, you're gonna have to see exactly what the speed is between Serena and Urshifu. Tornadus, though, goes for a protect here, opting to stay safe in the face of this trick room where it's going very fast. Urshifu also goes for a protect, so trying to not take any damage, maybe stall out one turn at this trick room here. Porygon 2 goes for the Thunderbolt into the protected Tornadus slot, so that's not going to be doing any damage. And the Power Whip here from the Serena also going into the Tornadus slot, so not going into that Urshifu, so an interesting target as well. Yeah, really nice there, um, knowing that the Urshifu was possibly going to protect um, and just targeting down into that Tornadus, but to no avail, Tornadus still protecting as well. And we often know Tornadus for running that Focus Sash, so I think the double up's quite nice. If you could utilize the opportunity calling a Protect to try and prop the Focus Sash and then pick up a KO, would be really nice for that end game because yes, Trick Room set up for Yenosha at the minute, that sounds great, but if towards the end game that Tornadus is still around and it can go for those Tailwinds and Water Spout potentials, then that's where things can really turn in a dime as soon as Trick Room is over. So thing, if you're, you know she needs to find a way to remove that Pokemon from play, whereas if you're Alexandra, knowing that it is going to be a direct target, you might want to switch it out here and protect it and preserve it for a little bit later on. Yeah, absolutely. And this Tornadus, you know, if it is getting knocked out by the Slenderbolt early on, it's not going to be able to get something like a Hurricane out. That Thunderbolt, though, from the Porygon 2 goes into the Urshifu, just does about a about third of its health. And the Power Whip goes out, but it gets the miss onto the Urshifu. Urshifu goes for a wicked blow here. So I apologize. This is actually the uh, Dark type Urshifu. And I was saying, sing, uh, I was saying the Rapid Strike instead of the Single Strike, but that is enough to knock out the Serena there. And Tornadus goes for a Hurricane, still hits without the rain there, and does a pretty good. Uh, about a quarter of the damage, but gets the confusion onto Enosha's Porygon, which is absolutely huge. Yeah, and don't worry, I was thinking it was the Rapid Strike variant as well, but Single Strike, I think, is so nice to have in a format. We often see the Rapid Strike variant due to it being, obviously, the, the, the water type, and that does make that Fire Water Grass Core really nice and succinct. But when you've got a Kyogre on your team, I think you've got your water type covered. So having a Pokemon um, with that dark typing as well is really great when you have got this kind of sea of um, psychic type Pokemon out on the field, such as the Indeedees and also the Calyrexes as well. Being able to bring a powerful dark type move can be really great there. Um, this is where things look interesting though. I know she's able to bring in the Groudon. Not really going to be able to touch the Tornadus with something like a Precipice Blade. So I know she really is going to have to pick which Pokemon he wants to target down here and try and get those KOs against. You're going to have to go for something like a Rock Slide or a Heat Crash to try and touch that Tornadus. Yeah, absolutely. But the Tornadus here goes for another Protect in this Trick Room, getting rid of that third turn of possible damage. And Urshifu goes for a Protect as well. Neither of these Pokemon are going to be wanting to take any damage. The Confused Porygon, though, gets that Thunderbolt off, not taking any damage to itself, but isn't able to hit anybody on the opposing side of the field. Oh. Groudon, though, gets a very free Swords Dance up, putting it in a very comfortable position, getting its attack boost there making it something that neither of the Pokemon on Alexandra's side of the field are going to want to face, especially with another turn of Trick Room coming down. You know what, I was going to say, I'm loving the way Alexandra's playing. It's very slow and steady, very kind of methodical with these protects, trying to stall out the Trick Room. But then, you know, she was just able to capitalize on that and get that Sword Stance up, and that's something Alexandra really has to play around here. Reggie Alecki coming into the fray. I mean, Sword Stance or no Sword Stance, Reggie Alecki's not going to appreciate taking anything from Groudon anyway, as Tornadus is finally able to lock the taunt down onto that opposing Porygon too. And it can't use that recover after the taunt and the precipice blades comes out from the Groudon. Gonna be a very easy knockout onto that Regieleki, but no damage onto the Tornadus. That taunt is absolutely huge, especially now that that Serena, you know it's not gonna switch back out onto the field after that Groudon's got that really comfortable sword stance up. Yeah, now this is where things get interesting. Trick Room is now over, and Alexandra has the opportunity to bring in the Kyogre. Overset the weather here, so Groudon's not going to have the sun. We know that the Porygon 2, A, can't recover, B, can't set up another Trick Room in this situation, and the Groudon is not going to appreciate taking one of these water spouts. Um, again, we don't know what the item is on the Kyogre as of yet, so if it is carrying something like a Choice Specs as well, it's just going to be absolute destruction. But I think at this point, the combination of Tornadus and Kyogre is going to be able to get the KOs here. Groudon coming into the Trick Room indicates it is going to be slower than that Kyogre as well. So you almost don't have to worry about setting up a Tailwind at this point if you are that Tornado. So you can just go for the Water Spout and try and go for a Hurricane, maybe try and predict um, if a Serena switch is going to happen and try and catch that on the switch in, or just double up into that Groudon and just do your best to try and move it from the fray. Instead, though, that Groudon is going to go back to Enosh, even with those Sword Stance boosts. Going to bring out the Grim Snarl here. Kyogre getting a Water Spout off with full HP, so this is going to be a massive amount of damage. Brings the Porygon to under half and completely knocks out that Grim Snarl, which means that Groudon could come back and reset the weather here. Tornadus goes for the Hurricane, full accuracy because of Groudon's weather. Uh, really great synergy there, but gets another confusion? Or no, it is still the same confusion. Oh. Porygon 2 does hurt itself, though, so it is not able to get off something like that Thunderbolt into that pesky uh, Tornadus slot, and that Groudon will come in and change the weather. 
yeah, that's what Inertia really needed, was to get a Thunderbolt off there and, you know, try and negate some of the damage that Kyogre was capable of dealing with. But hitting itself in Confusion, yes, the Sun's now back on the field, but if this Tornadus is the Rain Dance variant, then all Alexandra really needs to do is click Rain Dance Water Spout, change the weather up, and deal destruction. One more Water Spout's going to be able to pick up the KO against that Porygon too, and very likely against that Groudon as well. Yeah, absolutely. And this Groudon, even if it's got the Sun up here, it's not going to be able to do a ton of damage, any real damage to this Tornadus, unless it goes for something like a Heat Crash, like you said. We obviously know that it's not Scarfed because it did use Swords Dance, and they typically don't run any sort of choice item on these Groudons because they really do need that extra bit of setup. But mm -hmm. it's going to have to see exactly, you know, if you can get a Protect off, maybe keep some, you know, protect the Pokemon on your side of the field. Kyogre, though, will go for that Water Spout here onto both of these Pokemon. Groudon, even with the Sun Up, still does not love to take that. Porygon 2 is knocked out while the Groudon has just under half of its HP. This Tornadus going for that Hurricane into the Groudon slot as well. Getting that accurate, getting that inaccurate move even with the Sun Up does not knock out the Groudon, though, as it goes for a Heat Crash into the Tornadus slot. That is enough to get the one-hit knockout, though, in the Sun. So whatever Alexander has in the back is probably going to be pretty comfortable. You know, if it is, it will be that Urshifu. But the Life Orb recoil there from the Life, uh, from that Groudon is enough to knock it out after taking all of that damage. Yeah, it's a fantastic game one victory there. And I, I think the interesting thing for me is that Tornadus. We didn't see it go for that rain dance in those last couple of turns, and it really makes me question whether it is actually carrying out. I believe the move pools we've already seen. We've seen the Hurricane. Uh, we've seen Taunt. We've seen Protect. Very likely the fourth one there is going to be the Tailwind over Rain Dance. So interesting that it may not be running that. And that could be good information for Anosh going forward into this game too, that potentially he doesn't have to fear that strategy from being activated. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, one of the other moves that it'll sometimes run is that Icy Wind, but you're always mm. going to want to pick Tailwind over that. If you're going to get any sort of speed control, Tailwind's your best bet on a Tornadus. You know, that Icy Wind doesn't get a Prankster uh, boost there like Tailwind does, but obviously mm. not a team you want to use Tailwind against. Because if you do, uh, you know, if they do get that Trick Room up and it is, and you have your Tailwind up, you're just going to be moving even slower. And <laughs> it's just a tougher position to be in in terms of playing. Uh, mm -hmm. One thing that we didn't see, obviously, that Grimmsnarl came in, it only really set up one light screen, and that was all it did for Anosh, so you have to wonder exactly how good that light screen was for while it was in the game, because there was still a lot of damage coming out, and maybe if Anosh brings in something that's a little bit of a heavier hitter, uh, maybe that Nihiligo, even though it's not going to love taking that uh, Kyogre's Water Spout, but it is a, uh, it is not the Water-type Urshifu either on, Anna on Alexandra's side. Yeah, that's the thing. Despite having kind of the light screen up, there was still some big damage being dealt up, particularly by the Urshifu, for example. Um, it was able to deal a significant amount of damage. Um, I think as well, one thing Alexandra did really well was kind of stall out that that trick room, was able to, you know, use Protect, pivot in the Regieleki. So sad to see it so go, go down so quickly, but it was crucial to being able to allow that Kyogre into the position that it needed to be in. I think one thing if you're a Noche, you need to do is kind of preserve your Braddle to make sure that that weather does get overwritten. We did see how much damage it was capable of dealing even without this uh, sorry without the rain on the field but if you're maybe able to guarantee that you've got the weather up then at least those hurricanes are going to have even more chance of missing yeah the leads here though alexander's bringing that tornadus and urshifu so very similar to that last game uh while the nihiligo in the porygon 2 here for anosh so that switch there of the lead so that nihiligo is going to come out and put a lot of rock type pressure if it is carrying something like that meteor beam with the power herb could do, you know, it could be a really comfortable one-hit knockout into this Tornadus, and this Porygon also already putting on pressure for Trick Room. Yeah, the Trick Room's the thing that would be really unnerving me at this point. Um, you know, Tornadus could easily go for that Taunt, but then we could see a Serena switch in, and then obviously the Taunt's not going to go off, and we're going to see a complete re uh, reenactment of Game 1. Urshfu, however, can also apply some really great pressure here, something like a close combat into that Porygon 2 is going to do such huge damage. Um, but then again, I feel like you would still need the double up. We've seen Porygon 2s be able to take close combats, um, so Porygon 2 might need to be able to survive that out go for that trick room anyway um but i do feel like the tour is going to be the obvious choice here so serena switching in if you are alexandra though are you going to call that correctly and are you maybe going to target accordingly try and get that um serena caught on the way in but it looks like there's going to be a switch from alexandra maybe predicting the trick room is going to go up and is going to let it yeah maybe alexandra here wants that trick room to go up the serena does switch in for the nihiligo trying to mitigate whatever taunt could be coming out to stop the trick room from the porygon but Alexander brings in her slower Pokemon. Urshifu goes for a Protect here, just in case some reeds came up from Anosha's side. That Trick Room goes off, though. So this stack attack is very comfortable in Trick Room, you know, especially with something like a Gyro Ball or a Heavy Slam. 
Yeah, that's the thing. Stack Attacker loves being in the strict room environment. We've seen it do some very great destruction with something like a Rock Slide or a Gyro Ball here. Uh, ultimately, though, there's not really too much that it can do to something like the Paragon 2. But then again, Paragon 2 can't deal too much back. We know it's got that Thunderbolt on there. That can chip away at Urshifu, break potential Focus Ashes and things like that. But I think the key Pokemon here is going to be that Serena. Any of those powerful Grass type moves going down in Stack Attacker are certainly going to hurt. Particularly something like a High Jump Kick as well. But High Jump Kick is always the high risk, high reward kind of move. If you go into it to protect, that's going to deal 50% damage to you, and that's something Serena definitely cannot afford, particularly when in the face of an Urshifu that can get those critical hits with Wicked Blow. Yeah, the stack attacker here goes for that Gyro Ball, though, into the Serena slot. That is going to do a massive chunk of damage, well over the 50%, while the Porygon 2 goes for the Ice Beam into the Urshifu slot here. Does also just about 50%. Serena gets that Power Whip off, though, into their Urshifu, and that'll be a very clean knockout here onto the Urshifu with a critical hit to boot, but I don't believe that that mattered. So that Urshifu is not gonna be able to do any real damage, only went for that Protect turn one. So it just kind of sat there and took all of that damage in that Trick Room and the Tornadus comes back out for Alexandra. Yeah, this is something I think that you know she needed was to get rid of that Urshifu that could really threaten down against that Porygon 2. And Porygon 2 is sitting relatively pretty here. It can go for that Ice Beam or even the Thunderbolt um, that's obviously just been revealed into that Tornadus and try and deal with it that way. We know that Inosh has capabilities to deal with that stack attacker going forward, something like the Groudon with the Precipice Blades or even the Heat Crash is going to deal with a significant amount of damage to stack attacker. Um, and then... You know, you can pivot around with that Nile Ego as well that we've already seen. Nile Ego can go for that really powerful Meteor Beam with the Power Herb, and that will deal so much damage to the pool Pokemon that's going to face that move. Yeah, the Nile Ego switches back out for the Serena here, while uh, we're going to have to see exactly, you know, if there, it was, if there was a taunt, if there was the call there, but it wasn't. Once again, we see Alexander going for the Protect in this Trick Room, while the Gyro Ball comes back out into the Nile Ego, that is going to be a very easy one-hit knockout. Nile Ego is not the most bulky of Pokemon, so it's not going to comfortably take a Gyro Ball. And that Beast Boost, get, Beast Boost gets up for Alexander, which is huge, boosting the defense of that stack attack. The Thunderbolt, though, for Porygon 2 goes into the Protected Tornado slot, which is once again not taking damage. Yeah, that was really unfortunate for Inosh there, losing your Nile Ego. And I think the critical thing is actually giving that stack attack and the defense boost when you've got two physical Pokemon left on your side of the field is not what you want to see. You need to be able to take down the stack attacker. Um, again, Crowdon is certainly a very powerful heavy hitter and something like a Precipice Blade will deal a lot of damage, but then it's not going to be able to hit that Tornado. So you need to be able to find a way to deal with it. And Porygon 2, able to go for something like this Ice Beams or Thunderbolts, will have a way to work around that. Um, ultimately, though, you do have to worry again, like you've mentioned, that Taunt going down into Porygon 2. It's going to stop any Trick Rooms in the future, but also stop the recovery. And that's something Porygon 2 often does depend upon. It can take a lot of hits, but it needs the utility to be able to recover so that it can keep taking them right down into the end game of the match. Yeah, absolutely. The Porygon 2, especially if it gets another recover off and it sits next to this bulky Groudon, a Precipice Blades could really could do a ton of damage to that stack attacker. But obviously this Porygon doesn't have redirection, so this Groudon's not going to comfortably want to go and set up a sword stance here, especially in the face of some Pokemon that can do a good amount of damage to it. Wide Guard, though, from the stack attack, a great move trying to stop something like that Precipice Blades. Porygon 2 goes for the Thunderbolt and the... Uh, the berry here for Tornadus, that is going to do uh, only just about, a, I believe, a quarter or a half of the damage that it would be doing. Otherwise, the Wacken Berry is something that we've been seeing pick up a lot more with electric types. But the Heat Crash instead, no Precipice Blades, able to knock out that Tornadus. So that Tornadus not able to get any really strong moves off here, any taunts off onto this Porygon. So this Porygon is now very comfortable and not able to do any, uh, any recovers here. But the Kyogre is changing the weather. Yeah, that was excellent from Minosh there, being able to target down into the opposing tornadoes, remove it from the fray, and you don't have to worry about it potentially taunting or getting any of these hurricanes off. One thing you do have to worry about, though, of course, is that Kyogre coming in. We've seen how much damage it can deal to that um, Groudon, even in the sun, so in the rain it's going to be very destructive. Enosh, however, still has the utility to be able to go for the recovers with that Porygon 2 that was able to take the water spouts much better um, than the Groudon was, for example, and Porygon 2 with access to something like the Thunderbolt can still apply some good pressure to that opposing Kyogre. The issue with Stack Attacker going for the Wide Guards is yes, it does protect you from taking damage, but then you're also not dealing any in return, and in Trick Room you want to make sure that you are utilizing that opportunity, maybe trying to get some Gyro Balls off here, even just some Rock Slides to start chipping away, trying to get some flinches as well to help out that Kyogre. Yeah, and especially if this Wide Guard keeps going up, you know, Groudon's not going to be able to do a lot of damage with Heat Crash on either of these Pokemon. No Wide Guard, though. Instead, it'll be the Gyro Ball from the Stack Attack. It does a really good amount of damage. Porygon 2, though, going for a Thunderbolt into the Kyogre. This does just over half, 
So if this Precipice Blades does connect, that will still do a Ooh. massive amount of damage. No misses here from the Precipice Blades. That is a double knockout, and that is a win for Anosh. An absolutely massive game there. If that, if there was a wide guard from that stack attack, it would have been completely different. Yeah, wide guard would have completely changed the face of the match there. But phenomenal adjustments there from Inosh, just making sure that kind of the trick room is utilized much better. Um, having the grad on in a situation where he could go for those devastating precipice blades and not living in fear of the rain, I think was really, really nice. Yeah, and I mean, Precipice Blades, once you were able to get that Tornadus out of play, you know, very focused on removing that Pokemon that once you start going for Precipice Blades, it's going to, you know, it's not going to hit that Tornadus. You still have to get that Heat Crash and being mindful of getting it while, you know, before any rain came up, while you still had all the power behind your Heat Crash, I think was huge. Um, mm -hmm. I love the adjustments Anosh made. I think Nihiligo, even though it didn't do a whole lot in that game, I think it had to change the way that Alexandra played because she had to be then more mindful of the Nihiligo itself. You know, if it's able to get off something like a Meteor Beam onto um, onto the Tornadus on um, her side, mm -hmm. you know, it means that you have to be more mindful, even when you've got the Serena moving in and out and providing utility there for Anosh as well. Oh, 100%, you have to respect the um, Nihiligo on the team. It can be so powerful, like you mentioned, with the, the Meteor Beam there. Um, and I think, you know, I was a little bit concerned from the stack attackers getting those beast boosts, but in the end, it didn't matter. The power of Groudon did ring through and was able to pick up the KO against it. Um, I think, you know, Alexandra, there wasn't necessarily anything wrong with the way she, um, she played there was still able to utilize the Pokemon really well. I think just the the one difficulty was that, you know, she was able to kind of keep the Paragon 2 and the Groudon into a great position, just making sure that, you know, Alexandra wasn't putting pressure to stall through those trick room turns and kind of negate the opportunities that Enosh had. Yeah, and this will be a really interesting game three here. We've seen the weather control from both players and both of their wins uh, make how important that is. Even if the weather wasn't on for that last turn for Enosh, he was still able to utilize it in trick room. And uh, Alexandria here, though, going for the exact same lead she's got in both games, that Tornadus and Urshifu, while we get the Nihiligo and Porygon 2 again from Enosh, which worked so well for him in that last game. Uh, once again, you have to be wary of that Serena switch in and that trick room, and then also maybe that stack attack coming in from Alexandria's side as well. Yeah, the Serena is always a concern, but again, there's good offensive pressure coming out here from Alexander, you know, going for um, something like the close combat here into the Porygon uh, will certainly deal a huge chunk of damage, but the Nihiligo, I believe last time, just switched straight out, um, and this is where you kind of get those mind games. Nihiligo, again, in such a great position where you could go for something like the Media B and pick up the KO against the Tornadus and just remove that Pokemon from the fray. It's certainly been quite a pesky one, and you know it's not holding anything like a Focus Sash, but it's able to get the taunt down on the Porygon too. No fear of Serena from Alexandra. Yeah, and no switches whatsoever here. The Meteor Beam from the Nihiligo is going to go off with that Power Herb into the Tornadus slot, so not fearing that stack attack a switch in either. So now if this Porygon 2 went for that Trick Room, that's going to be absolutely huge with that Taunt. Even if the Tornadus gets knocked out this turn, which it definitely will be because that Power Herb Meteor Beam is so strong, and you didn't get the Meteor Beam miss, which is one of the most devastating things for a two-turn mm -hmm. move. That Beast Boost is well going to raise the special attack on that Nihiligo. Urshifu goes for the close combat though into the Porygon 2 does over half but that's not going to be able to stop something like uh but it's not going to matter if it doesn't stop something like that trick room because that trick room won't go off because of the taunt from the tornadoes yeah that was a really nice turn kind of all round to be honest tornadoes being able to lock out the trick room giving Alexandra that sigh of relief from the speedier pokemon on her side of the field but at the same time from Minos, you've got rid of that annoying tornado so you don't have to contend with it anymore you know going for those taunts locking down your teams and also if serena is in the back it does protect it from taking any of those hurricanes as well um the urshifu however sitting on the field relatively unchecked at this point in time um yes it has will take some drops in the close combat but it's in a very good position to just go for another one of those kyogre of course can go for something in like a water spout here deals some big damage and even if a nosh does want to go for some kind of switch any pokemon that is going to come in is going to fall risk to taking one of those powerful water spouts and you know groudon i think coming on and resetting the weather could be advantageous here that could be what nihiligo could potentially need in order to kind of survive out of water spout and deal some big damage particularly with the special attack boosts that the nihiligo has now got from the beast boost and also from obviously the the secondary effect of the media beam as well yeah but that porygon 2 will switch out getting rid of that taunt effect 
getting the drought up with the grout on that then switches in so that water spout won't be doing nearly as much damage here urshifu goes for a sucker punch into nanaya ligo which i really love and the water spout here from the kyogre that uh, sucker punch damage should be enough with that water spout in the sun will get the knockout on that nanaya ligo and do a really big chunk of damage onto that grout on even with the sun up so now, you know, this Groudon has to be very wary. It did not switch in very safely here, even with the sun to mitigate the damage. And Serena will come in in the stead of that Nihiligo. I honestly think Alexandra's in the driving seat right now. That Sucker Punch did so much damage, and she's really leaving it, like, not fearing this Serena at all. You know, Serena switching in there would have, you know, stopped Sucker Punch from being able to go for anything. But I think the critical thing for Inosh was to get that weather up, to help out the Nihiligo with the you know we're negating some of the water type moves but just unfortunately it wasn't enough in combination with sucker punch now again yes you can't go for sucker punch while serena's on the field but urshifu still has you know full hp at this point it's going to be able to deal a heavy hit to whichever pokemon it wants to target you've already mentioned there that the groudon has such low hp and that little water spout is going to be devastating to it the serena however you know with the grass type moves it can deal a decent chunk to that opposing kyogre so i think it is wise here for alexander to be able to switch it out bring the stack attacker in um because it also enables alexander to be able to switch up that weather yeah, Groudon actually also switches out here. Not going to want to take any big damage. The Porygon 2 coming back in just to be a little bit more annoying and maybe get that Trick Room off onto the Pokemon. But knowing now that that Stack Attack is still on Alexandra's side of the field, which we saw how slow that was, uh, that is going to be a really big change here. But the Wicked Blow, though, into the Porygon 2 slot Ooh. isn't enough to get the knockout, though. It was so, so close. Serena goes for the High Jump Kick, does connect with this move that is uh, bringing down the Urshifu to its Focus Sash. So just down to that last bit of HP that it's got. So you're going to have to be careful here. This Porygon 2, it could go for something like that Recover, but it's going to be really, it's not going to be in a safe spot here. All of these Pokemon besides the Stack Attack are faster than it. And if it mm. goes for something like a Trick Room, you don't have any redirection. Yeah, that's the thing. Porygon 2 actually be able to survive on that is very, very nice. Just another Pokemon utility here. Um, again, the options are interesting for Porygon 2. You could try and, you know, you don't want to set up a Trick Room necessarily in the face of a Stack Attacko. It could be a great opportunity to go for a Recover. Because um, if you're Alexandra, you know, one little damage is going to be able to remove that Porygon 2 from play. But then you are leaving that Serena with free reign. And with the High Jump Kick and the fact that it seems to be getting the accuracy on it at the moment, it's something that is going to heavily threaten that Stack Attacko as well. Urshifu, of course, very low proximity and isn't going to be able to access anything like Sucker Punch here, so it just retreating for Alexandra as Kyogre comes back into the field. Yeah, Kyogre coming out still with full health, getting that rain back on the field, getting rid of that sun. This Kyogre really not having to deal with any big damage yet, but if the Serena goes for the Power Whip into the Kyogre slot, which oh. it does, it does get that read, gets the one-hit knockout on the Kyogre, which is huge. Now you don't have to deal with anything like those water spouts that can get a ton of damage. Porygon gets that free recover here because it did not get attacked at all. Gonna gain 50% of its HP back, put it back up over half. Stack Attacka goes for the Gyro Ball though into that Porygon 2 slot, which just regained a lot of HP, but it does not bring it down to nearly as close as, it, as to being knocked out as it was before. Wow, the tables have definitely just turned. Picking up a solid KO against Alexander's Restricted. No more utility to bring that Kyogre in. Um, we know the, so the Groudon as well, hanging out in the back, is going to be able to be the restricted Pokemon to come back in later on. Um, I think as well, you know, Porygon 2 getting that recover up just meant the Gyro Ball's not able to pick up the KO against it, and Southern Stack Attack has got a bit of a problem. There isn't a very easy way to remove this Porygon 2 from play unless you use the Urshifu to target it down. And unfortunately, you need to be able to target down that Serena because Serena's just able to go for those high jump kicks or it can go for anything, to be honest, into that Urshifu and remove it. So Alexandra needs to be very careful with her targeting here, whereas Anosh certainly has the offensive pressure and momentum at this point in the match. Yeah, and that Urshifu, you know, it can't go for something like a Sucker Punch here because that Serena is so oppressive with that Queenly Majesty on the field, not able to get any of those big hits off. You know, Alexander has to hope for something like a High Jump Kick miss. The Wicked Blow, though, will go out first. That'll go into the Porygon 2 slot. We'll get that knockout finally for Alexandra, so she's not going to have to worry about another recover or something like a trick room here. Serena goes for payback though, which I love, oh my goodness. And payback is enough to knock that Urshifu out. Even if it's not fully effective, it does get that extra damage from the knockout of its partner there. While Stack Attack, it goes for the Gyro Ball into the Serena, does a really good chunk of damage, about three quarters of its health just almost. And he'll be able to bring that Groudon back in, get rid of the rain now that Alexander only has Stack Attack against both of these Pokemon. And Stack Attack is not gonna love taking something like a Precipice Blades here. 
though we saw how much in game two that precipice rage was able to do to the stack attack even with the defense boost in play and particularly now it's single target as well i mean it was just able so well to just remove the threats on alexander's side of the field picking up the ko against that opposing kyoga straight away before it's able to come in and go for anything i thought was excellent play removing the urshifu as well with that guaranteed hit with the payback as well was nice you know not having to risk any kind of moves that we're going to miss for example um and just leaving the stack attacker to sit here ready to take the precipice blades um, you know, finds its mark, solid KO against it, meaning that Enosh is going to be the victor in this particular match. You know, Lou, I think every Pokemon's item this game was wide guard. Uh, was, sorry, was wide guard, because <laughs> I don't think yeah. that any Pokemon missed any moves. I think all of our Hurricanes in the Sun hit, so it was just one of those games where I feel like you could hope for that, you know, for the inaccuracy here. I think the only thing we have were Porygon 2 hitting itself in confusion, but all of the Precipice Blades hit, the Hurricanes all hit, the High Jump Kick hit, so there was really no inaccuracy luck there. You know, Alexandra's win con would be a win, uh, Precipice Blades miss, mm -hmm. and then something like, you know, the Serena then going for a high jump kick and then missing yes. and then losing the rest of its HP and then somehow able to get, you know, damage off into that Groudon. So that win con is really tough there, especially if you're you're just, you're waiting on luck is really all it is. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be lucky and Enosh has to be very unlucky. So I love the adjustment that Enosh made. I thought that Nihiligo was really impressive, especially making the call that that stack attacker wouldn't switch in game three. And you could get rid of that Tornadus, which was bothering you so much in both of those mm -hmm. games, uh, especially because, you know, having that taunt and even, you know, the pressure of Tailwind, which it never ended up using because all of the Pokemon on the Alexander side tended to be faster anyway due mm -hmm. to Enosh's Trick Room team. Yeah, and I, I think that was the key thing, and particularly in that game three, you know, there was that trade, you took the taunt on your Porygon 2 for a Nosh, but then at the same time, you pick up the KO against the Tornadus, and I think that really was the critical thing there. It was an excellent trade-off because Porygon 2, reasonably bulky, obviously, when I say reasonably very bulky, let's be honest, was able to then still pilot things through with the Ice Beam and Thunderbolt and could still apply pressure while taking hits, and there's not a Pokemon that you can leave relatively unchecked on the field, particularly if those taunt wears off and you want to get something like the Trick Room up, it can be really pivotal, but I think for a Nosh, just making sure that that Nile Ego picked up that KO, gets all of the boosts and is super, super threatening. I think really did put him in a good position there. And of course, picking up the KO against that Kyogre just really, you know, put Alexander on the back foot there. Oh, absolutely. Getting that, that Kyogre switch in there was, I think, a mm -hmm. really tough spot to be in because, you know, you went for, you went for something thinking, you know, you went for a switch in that ended up not being safe and you lost your biggest attacker at full health, which is where Kyogre wants to be. So that loss was really detrimental, I think, to the rest of the game plan. Because then you're on, like you said, you're on the back foot. You have to, you have to start playing more cautiously now that you've given up your strongest attacker on your field. And you know that stack attack is not loving being across the street from a grout on there. Uh, so again, wonderful play by both of these players. Anosh had some really, really nice adjustments there. Alexandra still played very well, knowing mm -hmm. exactly how tough it is, these weather wars. If you lose that weather, it becomes a little bit tougher, uh, especially, you know, like we said, there was no rain dance shown on that Tornadus, which yeah. I doubt that there would be because Tailwind is really that priority. Yeah, wins the win, surely. That, that's yeah. the one you pick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I think that'll do it for this round. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back with the next uh, the next set of matches for the day.